Welcome to Mission Gathering Online. Tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And so today I want us to learn about someone who is deeply influential in the civil rights movement and someone that who I never heard of until just a few years ago. He was the reason Martin Luther King Jr. Um, chose a nonviolent path of resistance for the civil rights movement. Um, he was an organizer of the March on Washington. He helped form the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Uh, but the reason we have never heard of him is because he was an openly gay man, Bayard Rustin. Uh, the reason he chose a path of nonviolence is because he was influenced by his grandparents who were Quakers. If you know the Quaker tradition is a tradition of nonviolence. They believe that Jesus taught nonviolence. Um, Jesus taught to love your enemies rather than retaliate against them, and Quakers take this literally. Um, in the story of Jesus, the night he was arrested, uh, the guards come f forward to grab Jesus, and Jesus' followers ask Jesus, should we pull out our swords? And then one of his followers do pull out their swords, and they cut off the ear of one of those people who were trying to arrest Jesus. Jesus yells, stop, no more of this. And then he grabs the ear, and he puts his hand on the head um, of the attacker, and he heals him. Uh, so Quakers believe that we, as followers of Jesus, should also um, live in the world in a way of literal peace and nonviolence. Um, and so Bayard was deeply influenced by this Quaker tradition. Um, Bayard, towards the end of his life, said, My activism did not spring from being black. Rather, it is rooted fundamentally in my Quaker upbringing and the values instilled in me by the grandparents who reared me. And those values were based on the concept of a single human family and the belief that all members of that family are equal. And I hope we as well can live our life out of that value, uh, that we are all part of one human family and all are equal. Bayard was gay openly uh, at a time when it was very much illegal to be gay. Um, and it's just why we have never heard of him, uh, especially in Christian traditions. Um, there's a story that he um, told his grandma that he preferred the company of men over women, and his grandma responded, Well, I suppose um, then you should spend more time with men. Um, so he grew up in a supportive, loving home that instilled the values of nonviolence. And he spent time in India learning the traditions and the ways of Gandhi of nonviolent resistance. Um, so today I want us to watch a short video and learn about his life. Uh, because for far too long, he has been forgotten. Um, he has been left out of the history books. Uh, he certainly was in my education of the civil rights movement. Um, so we need to remember him, honor him, and seek to live out the same value that was instilled by his Quaker grandparents. We are all one human family. We are all equal. Hi, my name is Tony Lynn A. Sedeco. When people think of civil rights leaders, Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks come to mind. However, Bayard Rustin might not. Why? Bayard Rustin was an activist for racial equality, economic justice, and human rights, and one of the most important figures of the American civil rights movement. His impact was far-reaching, but he is most associated with bringing nonviolent resistance methods to the civil rights movement and organizing the 1963 March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Openly gay and a Renaissance man to the core, Rustin was an artist, intellectual, and visionary with an exceptional talent for strategic planning and uniting people to work for change. That is the most important meaning of today's session, that we acted Born in 1912 in Westchester, Pennsylvania, Rustin was raised by his grandparents. His pacifism and activism were sparked by his Quaker grandmother, who was a charter member of the NAACP. Young Rustin excelled in academics, music, and sports. 
In the 1930s, he moved to Harlem and studied music at the City College of New York. To support himself, he performed professionally with a musical quartet and even sang on Broadway. In New York, Rustin joined the Young Communist League. But when the group shifted its emphasis away from civil rights in 1941, he left to join the Fellowship of Reconciliation. He led workshops on nonviolent resistance, sharpened his skills as a community organizer, and co-founded the interracial civil rights group, the Congress for Racial Equality, known as CORE. Rustin was arrested multiple times for engaging in peaceful civil disobedience. The man who believes in nonviolence is prepared to be harmed, to be crushed, but he will never crush others. In 1947, he organized the first Freedom Ride to challenge the segregated public transit system in the South. Rustin was arrested for sitting next to a white man on a bus and sentenced to work on a chain gang for 30 days. After his release, he published a report that led to chain gang reform in the prison system. Rustin never tried to hide his sexual identity, but he lived during an era when being gay was illegal. In 1953, he was jailed on a morals charge for being in a car with two men. His identity as a gay black man caused problems for Rustin, even within the civil rights movement. Some of his peers considered Rustin a liability and distanced themselves from him. Rustin continued working for justice and racial equality behind the scenes. In 1956, Rustin began mentoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in Gandhi's principles of nonviolent resistance while helping King with the Montgomery, Alabama bus boycott. Soon, Rustin became King's lead advisor and strategist. Rustin also helped King form the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, committed to uniting black leaders in the South. In 1960, Rustin and King planned a protest at the Democratic National Convention to force the party's commitment to civil rights. Objecting to the prospect of picket lines at the convention, Congressman Adam Clayton Powell Jr. threatened to tell a lie that King and Rustin were having an affair unless King stopped working with Rustin. King canceled the protest and Rustin, for the sake of the movement, stepped aside. But in 1963, labor union leader A. Philip Randolph insisted that civil rights leaders enlist Rustin's expertise for the March on Washington for jobs and freedom. When Republican Senator Strom Thurmond, a segregationist who opposed civil rights for African Americans, tried to derail the march by attacking Rustin, black leaders united behind Rustin. Rustin went to work, methodically executing his plan. Freedom Now Movement, hear me. We are requesting all citizens to move into Washington any way that you can get there. We are pushing for jobs, housing, desegregated schools. This is an urgent request. Please join. In less than two months, Rustin organized one of the largest and most successful demonstrations in U.S. history. More than a quarter of a million people came to Washington, D.C., where Martin Luther King Jr. made his I Have a Dream speech. What made the march was that black people voted that day with their feet. They came from every state. They came in jalopies, on trains, buses, anything they could get. Some walked. That was the mass. They were the, the voice. And that's what the President of the United States and the Congress saw. That was a platform from which black people and Jews and Catholics and labor people were saying, pass the bill. The march helped secure passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Bayard Rustin was hailed as the architect of the March on Washington. 
In early 1964, Rustin led a boycott of the segregated New York City public school system. More than 450,000 students refused to attend school and thousands of demonstrators staged peaceful rallies all across the city. Despite its widespread support, the boycott did not lead to immediate reform. Rustin went on to co-found the A. Philip Randolph Institute, an organization of black trade unionists dedicated to racial equality and economic justice. In his later years, he traveled the world, serving on humanitarian missions to help refugees and became more vocal in the LGBTQ movement, testifying on behalf of New York State's gay rights bill. In 1987, Rustin passed away with longtime partner Walter Nagel by his side. He was posthumously awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama in 2013. It is the highest honor a civilian can receive. For decades, this great leader, often at Dr. King's side, was denied his rightful place in history because he was openly gay. No medal can change that, but today we honor Bayard Rustin's memory by taking our place in his march towards true equality, no matter who we are or who we love. Bayard Rustin's determination to realize a world free from segregation and suffering had a huge impact in his day and for future generations. May we all find ways to honor Bayard Rustin's memory by taking our place in his march towards true equality, no matter who we are or whom we love.